Um, thank you all for joining us this evening for our pre-camp webinar for our 2020 Northeast Showcase Plus that is coming up on September 12th and 13th at Baseball Heaven uh, in Long Island. We're excited to see you all face-to-face -face there. Um, but before then, we're happy to, to cover some of the details of what's going to be coming up at camp, um, introduce you to some of our team, and then certainly take as much time as possible to answer questions. Uh, in that questions vein, you should see a questions tab over in the GoToWebinar toolbar. If you have a question that comes up over the course of the webinar tonight, feel free to type it in there, fire it our way, and then I'll be collecting those. Uh, I'll be answering some of them via chat during the webinar, but then We'll be collecting the bulk of those to answer at the end, um, so feel free to fire them away throughout, and then we'll save those up for the, for the end of the evening. Before we dive into the content, a quick overview of what we're going to be covering tonight. So first, we'll give a quick series of introductions to myself and Jenna, who you heard in the sound test, and then our president founder, some other folks that you'll be seeing face-to-face -face on site in just a couple weeks. Um, then we'll really spend quite a bit of time talking through the logistics of what to expect uh, from those from that weekend on Long Island and what the two days of camp will look like and how to talk to coaches and, and all that. Um, and then we'll really dedicate a lot of the evening, as much time as, need, as needed, to the, the live Q&A portion at the end of it. So first up, Jenna, you want to give yourself a, a quick introduction? Yes, I sure can. Um, my name is Jenna Orlando. Um, I oversee the operations of our Head First Honor Roll Camps. Um, after graduating from Lafayette College three years ago, where I was fortunate enough to play softball, um, I immediately began working for the Head First companies. I took an opportunity to do a rotational program, which then pivoted me into focusing all of my time towards this honor roll camp division. Um, I'm really looking forward uh, to getting back on the field and meeting you all in person next week. And don't let Jenna's humility fool you. She was in what we call our leadership fellow program where we, she was supposed to rotate through different parts of the company. Once she got into the showcase side of the company, I think we just kind of kept her there selfishly because um, she was doing doing such a great job. So that's um, it's been a pleasure to have her on board for the last handful of years. I am Max McKenna. I'm our Senior Manager of Marketing uh, within the Honor Roll Division, handling uh, the Honor Roll Camps. Um, I graduated from Amherst College once upon a time in 2011. Um, I played baseball there for four years before going into teaching and coaching at the high school level, first at Phillips Andover Academy as a teaching fellow and assistant baseball coach up in Massachusetts, and then a uh, history instructor and head baseball coach at a, a small private school, a small boarding school outside New York City called the Master's School. I came back full-time to Head First uh, six and a half years ago in the summer of 2014 um, and have been working really closely with this division ever since to, to give families and parents the right guidance and experience through their recruiting process. Additionally, um, one other introduction from our team who is not on the webinar tonight, but who you will be seeing a lot of on site is our founder and president, Brendan Sullivan. Um, Brendan is a DC native where our company is based in DC. He's a DC native. He was a DC Gatorade player of the year in high school, went on to pitch at Stanford University where he graduated after three years um, and was drafted, uh, played in the Cape Cod League, was drafted in the 26th round, played up to AAA with the Padres, and the Texas Rangers before coming back and founding Head First um, to really foment positive coaching and positive exposure experiences for high academic student athletes in the off, actually in the off season um, when he was still a professional ball player. Um, he'll talk a little bit about his experience going around side of camp. You'll certainly be seeing his face and hearing his voice. Um, additionally to, to our Head First team, there also is one other person I'd love to introduce you to, our camp advisory partner, Diamond College Advisory Team or as we call them, DCAT. Um, DCAT is a college advisory program for, co for college-bound student athletes in baseball, softball, and soccer, and their mission is to help families demystify the recruiting process and really maximize opportunities to find the right fit both on the field and in the classroom at the next level. At camp uh, in, in a couple weeks, we'll be joined by Justin Kronk, who is the founder and executive director of DCAT, he also went to Amherst, where he was a two-sport athlete. He played football and baseball there, then went into the college coaching world for a handful of years. He was recruiting coordinator, assistant coach at Amherst, Boston College, UNC Asheville, um, head coach at Shenandoah, 
um, and then has really, for the last two decades or so, has brought that experience to bear both as a student athlete and then also as that, that college coach experience um, to help families through the recruiting process, particularly the high academic recruiting process and its intricacies and, and specific nuances. Next up, we're going to talk about what to expect on site, and we're going to start with, with some of the logistics. Jenna? Yes. Um, so we feel super lucky uh, to be returning to baseball heaven in Yapink, New York, next weekend on uh, September 12th and 13th. Um, to give you a sense of how much time you'll be spending at Baseball Heaven next weekend, we've laid out the arrival times on this slide. Um, what we've decided to do is split the camp in half. Um, therefore, for both days of camp, you will either arrive in the morning or the afternoon wave. If you are in the a.m. wave, your check-in will begin at 7 a.m. on day one and on day two. If you're in the PM wave, your check-in will begin at 1 p.m. on day one and 12.30 p.m. on day two. Each group can anticipate being on site for about five to six hours each day. To go into a little more depth um, on those wave assignments, um, we've decided, like I said, to split the group um, in half in order to just limit the number of people on site for safety reasons. Um, if you are assigned to the AM wave on day one, this will also apply to day two. With that being said, we totally understand that there are hardline factors like travel plans that can impact which wave you'd like to be, on, be in. Um, within our pre-camp email that will be sent tomorrow, there will, there will be a request form for you to simply let us know if you do have travel plans. Uh, that we need to accommodate for. Here we have an overhead view of the top-notch facility we'll be running at. Um, the most valuable pieces of this map to focus in on, on are the following. Um, the parking lot, which you will immediately come upon when turning into the facility. The check-in area, which is uh, denoted by this, this red arrow pointing into the facility. Um, which will be, yeah, just right through an entryway from that, from that parking lot just beyond field two. Um, and where we'll have programming take place. And that will be on field one and two throughout the entirety of camp. Um, otherwise, the nitty gritty details of where to be and when on site will be well communicated to players and to families on site by our staff. Upon arrival at camp, uh, every player must check in, which will be a fairly standard process um, with the added element of increased safety protocols. Um, so a key instruction we will be enforcing on site during this check-in period is players only in the check-in line, just to limit the number of people in one area and to maintain social distancing. Um, we strongly encourage each player to wear a mask while waiting in line, just as our head first staff will be um, throughout that check-in process. Additionally, each player will get their temperature checked uh, prior to entering the facility. Prior to coming to camp next Saturday, we have a few action items for you. Um, you will receive a pretty lengthy pre-camp email. Um, sorry in advance, but it is really important for you to read through it all in order to just complete the things that you need to complete before stepping foot on site and to ensure you are super well prepared heading into camp. Um, the first piece that will be a, a pretty important action item is a pre-screening form and our informed consent that must be submitted by next Thursday. Um, Additionally, you will receive an email prompting you to activate your Rapsodo account, which will allow us to um, capture that Rapsodo data on each player on site. Um, so please do so prior to your arrival and let us know if you have any issues um, when it comes to receiving that activation email. Um, finally, um, we have a new Head First on-site app in 2020, um, which we strongly recommend downloading um, just for additional content and also um, for on-site notifications. Uh, 
Absolutely. And as Jenna mentioned, all of that will be covered. It is unfortunately about a 1200 word pre-camp email, which as Jenna said, we, we apologize for. Uh, please do read through it for those action items as well as a couple other notes of things just to be aware of and to know before you show up on site. Um, one other further note about parent involvement on site is to maintain social distancing. We are allowing parents on site. They are allowed to come and watch but we are asking that they not come into the central field area. So in that kind of that clover, that central area between the four fields, that space will be designated and reserved for headfirst staff, players, and college coaches only. There will be dedicated viewing areas where parents can watch um, from uh, along the outfield and along the foul lines, which we will direct parents too, but we do ask that, that parents um, stay out of that central area just to eliminate crowds and really maintain that area for the people and the staff that do have to be there. Um, there are bathrooms and concessions available to parents at the Baseball Heaven Cafe, which is out by the entrance, um, so there certainly will still have access to the facilities there. They also, um, Joe, our friend at the Baseball Heaven Cafe, will also be enforcing um, some, some common sense rules with those bathrooms and with the facility, like limiting the number of folks who are allowed in the facility at any given time, and also doing managing the one in, one out uh, of the bathrooms as well. So they will be accessible. You will have access to bathrooms and concessions and everything, as well as the ability to watch all of the uh, camp action. Uh, but we do ask that it take place from certain designated areas that we will point you to on Saturday morning. So now we're going to go into the uh, day one schedule. After you check in, as Jenna mentioned, um, every player will head through for our, our all camp meeting, which will take place on a field and will still allow for physical distancing of the players and of the parents. Um, we'll cover some of the details of what to expect over the course of the day, and then we'll separate players up into their showcase groups. The first piece of programming that we'll go into is the defensive showcase. Um, during this defensive showcase, we'll be grouping players by their, um, their showcase position. They do not have to go with their primary position. They can go with the secondary position. If there's another position that they would rather showcase at, they can go with that position group. We do ask the players showcase at uh, one position only over the course of the day, though. Um, Janet, do you want to talk about the rest of the day one schedule? Yes, I, I sure can. Um, this, the second um, piece will be our offensive showcase. So similarly to that defensive showcase, um, players will be grouped in those positional groups, um, going through a large rotation of activities, um, one being, and the, the main point being, the showcase in the indoor cages with all coaches in attendance watching as rap soto data and video data video is collected. Um, Finally, we'll go into our pitcher showcase, which will allow each player who decided that they are showcasing as a pitcher to throw a bullpen in front of all of the coaches in attendance while getting their rap soto data and their video collected by our team. Um, an important note is that all of the video and data collected throughout these showcases will not only be shared with the coaches in attendance, um, but also our full head first coach database. Um, on day one, your wave will end with a coach connection period to allow all the players time to take advantage of something that there unfortunately just hasn't been a lot of this summer, and that is engaging in person with college coaches. Absolutely. And then day two will kick off and will be entirely, almost entirely taken up by simulated gameplay. So as Jenna mentioned at the beginning, day two arrival time will depend on your group assignment. You'll be in the same group on both days. So if you're in that early group one for day one, you will also have that 7 a.m. arrival time for day two um, and vice, vice versa. If you're in that group two, you'll be arriving with that group two wave on day two as well. Um, players are assigned to teams and every team will play in two seven inning games on day two for a total of 14 innings over the course of the day. Games are designed, they're not completely traditional baseball games. There's a few oddities and rules that we maintain, and they're really just meant to facilitate action and maximize opportunities. These are things like the batting order runs continuously. If I'm the second batter in the lineup and I'm the last hitter in the first game, it does not reset to the first batter in the order. 
it picks up wherever we left off. This is to make sure that over the course of those two games, as many players as possible are getting the ma maximum number of at-bats, and we're keeping them equitable as well. We also do things like play with a one-on-one -on -one count, and we have our red shirt, our, our head first staff behind the mound uh, calling balls and strikes and helping kind of speed players on and off the field with some energy, which is not only good to help things move quickly and, and facilitate action, but also the sort of stuff that college coaches want to see as well. Teams and defensive rotations are balanced by positional groups. So what we'll do is we'll arrive on site on Saturday with draft teams that are on their 95% done. Um, then we will just do one last accounting on Saturday night before Sunday morning to make sure that all of the teams are balanced positionally. And so it's not the, not the case that one team has four primary middle infielders and another team has one. We want to make sure that all the teams are balanced positionally, both for primary and secondary positions. Again, just to make sure that every player is getting their maximum defensive opportunities, uh, you know, same number of hitters on each team, same number, similar positional breakdowns, just to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to play their primary and their defense or and their secondary defensive position during those games on day two. There is some additional programming on day two as well including a, a Q&A panel for parents about the recruiting process with head first staff. This one, this time it will feature me, as well as Justin Cronk from DCAT. This is a great time to get any remaining questions that you have answered. Justin and I love talking with parents. We're there for the entire morning on day two. As games start up, we will end the official panel before the games do start so that you have the opportunity to go watch your, your ball player play. But we also stick around and have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations and answer questions. This is just a, a great thing. We find that a lot of parents and players have questions about the recruiting process, and so we love taking advantage of the chance that we have you guys on site to, you know, address as many of these questions as possible, especially in a year like this where there is some turbulence and difficulty and obstacles in the recruiting process. Additionally, there will be a second uh, day two coach connection period after each group's second game. So, uh, a team will arrive, they'll play in their two games, and they'll, they'll roll straight through between those. It'll be like playing a doubleheader, back-to-back -back games. And then they'll have uh, a period after that second game where they can, again, go around and, you know, not shake hands, but make some introductions to college coaches um, that they see on site so they can have start some of those face-to-face -face and personal engagements as they move through the recruiting process as well. On day two, camp will end by 12.30 p.m. for group one, and camp will wrap up by 6 p.m. Uh, for group two. So just keeping those end times in mind as you think about any travel plans that you may have. And again, as Jenna referenced, we do have that uh, wave request form, that group request form that you'll get tomorrow in that pre-camp email. If you have any, any hard plans on Sunday night or a flight going out of Islip or whatever the case may be, um, feel free to, to complete that. There are just a few notes to run through related to equipment on site. Uh, the first and most important being that Baseball Heaven is an all turf facility. Uh, therefore, there are no metal spikes allowed. So please wear rubber or molded spikes, uh, turf shoes or sneakers throughout the entirety of camp. Uh, the second um, is that to eliminate the sharing of equipment, we will not be providing helmets and dugouts. So please make sure you bring your own helmet to camp. Um, and as far as bats go, just ensure they meet the current high school regulations, so you're free to use metal BB core or wood bath um, as you please. In 2020, a huge part of us delivering the most valuable experience that we can to you all is ensuring that we run as safely as possible. Um, so this year we have advanced at camp safety protocols that will be enforced and can also be accessed in their entirety on our website. Um, a few important notes we'd like to just draw your attention to and really would appreciate you all complying to while on site. Um, on site social distancing will be enforced in an effort to maintain social distancing as best we can. We will not be using any dugouts. Um, during gameplay or throughout the entirety of camp, and we'll instead have players use the foul lines extending far down the line um, for their equipment. Um, masks, while not mandatory, especially during times of physical exertion, 
um, will strongly be encouraged among players. As mentioned earlier, we will be checking temperatures upon arrival uh, to camp each day and having each participant complete a pre-screening form before they step foot on site. Just like attendees, our Head First team will complete a screening and will be strongly encouraged to wear a mask, especially during our check-in process and while in the indoor facility. Of course, a hallmark of our experience is coach engagement. And while this may look a little different this year, this will still happen and, and be, um, be a part of camp. Um, with that being said, it must be done responsibly and we encourage players and coaches to wear masks, maintain social distance and avoid any physical contact such as a handshake throughout all of camp and especially during those coach connection periods. Um, PPE and san hand sanitizer will be available if needed on site for all players, all coaches, all staff. And as mentioned, when discussing our way of arrivals, group sizes will be limited um, throughout our full experience. Awesome. And now we're going to turn to how to prepare for the for this this upcoming weekend um, with some reference to your recruiting process as well. Um, and so, first of all, I will say that this picture is exactly what not to do in terms of what Jenna was just talking about, other than in spirit. The spirit of this picture will still absolutely be the hallmark of this camp in terms of, you know, connecting with college coaches, talking with them face to face. Everything else about this picture could use probably a, a red X through it. You know, there won't be handshakes. <laughs> coaches and players will be wearing masks during those periods. But the spirit of this is what we're, what we're going for. The way that I think about helping student athletes prepare for this camp uh, from an engagement, college coach engagement perspective, I, I separate out into three phases. There's before camp, there's at camp, and then there's after camp. And this after camp portion becomes really, really important when it comes to that head first database of 200 plus college coaches who are gonna be getting all this data and video from camp as well. Between now and camp, so over the next nine days, what I would love to see student athletes do is to do some research into the school list. Who's gonna be joining us there? What are the schools on that list that are on your college list or might be interesting to you? Um, or the schools you've never heard of that it turns out could be the right fit. Do some research on the schools that are attending. And then for the ones that you are interested in, send them an email and just say, hey coach, I'm, I'm gonna be at, uh, at the Head First Showcase Plus on September 12th. I'm really excited to meet you face to face from a distance. Uh, and I'm, I'm really interested in learning more about Amherst College or whatever the case may be, whoever it is that you're, that you're emailing. Um, do some of that email outreach over the next nine days so that you can lay the groundwork for when you do talk to these coaches face to face at, uh, on site. Once you're on site, the key is that first bullet, engage, engage, engage. Take whatever opportunities you have to start some of these conversations, introduce yourself to college coaches, um, and, and learn more about them and their programs as well. You know, don't just be there to say, I'm Max, here's about me, here's what I'm looking for, I'm interested in your program, but also take the time to learn from them. These are coaches who have a lot of experience coaching college baseball players. They're really good to learn from as well. So be open to engage with them, get some instruction from them, learn about their programs. Um, and in this vein, there's a lot of head first support, both in the camp programming and in our kind of personal connections that we are happy to help you with. To start these conversations with college coaches, it does not mean that you have to be the most extroverted kid who chases a, a coach across the field, hunts him down and says, I've been looking for you. There's a lot of opportunities for these sorts of connections to, to, to arise organically especially because coaches are assigned to fields during the games. There are those two connection periods, one on each day, where you'll have the chance to start these conversations very organically around the game of baseball. There's also a lot of support from Jenna, myself, Brendan, and a lot of our other red shirt staff will be on site. If you need help finding a coach or don't know what to say when you do find a coach or anything. If there's support that we can lend you on starting that conversation, continuing that conversation, what to say, how to say it, we're there to, to help you as well. And then as I mentioned, this after camp portion is really, really important this year above all others because while there will be a, a good variety of schools who are going to be on site at the Showcase Plus, there's also 200 plus more who won't be there on site but who will be getting the data 
and the video and the analytics and your information from camp. And so following up with those schools who can't be there in person because of school travel restrictions or the NCAA dead period or they're not comfortable flying or whatever the case may be, you still have the opportunity to follow up with them. So use that coach database that you see on our website and follow up with the coaches that you're interested in. Send them a note, send them a handwritten, uh, handwritten letter, send them a, a, a couple emails, link them to the stuff that they need. They will have your information, but the best way to make sure that they look at all of that information for you is to send them that email and say, hey coach, my name's Max McKenna. I was just at the Head First Showcase Plus. I know you got some of my video. I'm really interested in Amona. And so Coach Pericolosi, I'd love if you could take a look at it. Um, and just use that, them having that information as a, a, an intro into their inbox as well. You see here some of the schools that are gonna be confirmed in person over on the left side of the screen, some great schools that are from all over the country to some degree, although given travel constraints and concerns, certainly more East Coast and more Northeast heavy than we generally see at this type of camp, but still some really good schools. A couple more to be added here in the, in the coming days that are still um, hoping to confirm their attendance. There also will be a handful of NESCAC schools who will be on site, but due to restrictions in NESCAC recruiting that are currently in place, they won't be able to be wearing their branded Amherst gear, for example. They'll just be there kind of incognito in their plain clothes outfit, but there will be a handful of other coaches that we can't list here, uh, but that will be on site. In addition to those coaches who will be there on site in person on the 12th and 13th, there's also, as I mentioned, that whole uh, college coach database and 200 plus college coaches who will be getting digital access to all of this stuff. This is just a small sampling, um, represents division one schools, schools that are from all across the country, schools that for one case or one reason or another are unable to be on site. Use that database to research some schools, find some schools that you're interested in, and then also use that as an intro to, uh, to send those coaches a note and say, hey coach, I know you have my video, I'm really interested in you, Chicago, and I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, use this as an, as, a, as an entry point into some of those college coach conversations as well. To get into a few of our key partners that you should take full advantage of, um, our first being for travel accommodations, head first partners with OnPeak uh, so that our families can book directly through their platform in order to get the best hotel rates in the area. Um, you can learn more through our web website by going to the Enrolled Athletes tab and then clicking into Travel and Accommodations for our baseball events. And NextPro is our awesome video partner who records, tags, and distributes every pitch and at bat from camp to our college coaches. Um, NextPro actually collects defensive showcase and game footage on your player that will be sent to all to all coaches even if you do not pay for any of their video packages which is pretty awesome um, however you can buy access to have this footage in your own hands and to distribute on your own terms and now we're going to turn it over to the q a as promised i want to spend as much time as we need to um, need to here, and I know that some of you have already found the questions tab, they've been coming in, but just as a reminder, you can type your questions into that tab, press send, I'll be collecting them here. Um, if you have a question now, but you have to go make dinner, or you have plans tonight, or whatever the case may be, you want some quality family time, feel free to fire that in and then leave whenever you need to. This will not be your first, last, or only chance to, to get your questions answered. You see there on the screen some of our, our contact information. Feel free to reach out. We also do have a live chat feature on our website. So if you go to visit our blog, which has some great pre-camp resources as well, um, feel free to pop on there. You'll be chatting with either Sage or, or Matt Sternberg or myself, and uh, we should be able to get you the answers um, that you need. So now, Jenna, we're going to dive into the Q&A, and this first one is one that I'm going to, that I'm going to put your way. You mentioned that um, we won't be using the dugouts, and, and we did say that parents should bring some, some seating for themselves. What about players? Should players bring chairs uh, for them to use as they're seated socially distantly down the, 
down the lines during during games and during camp programming? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, I would say it's totally a matter of your own preference. There won't be a ton of time just due to the, the kind of the schedule of camp and the rotations happening that you will be needing to sit down near your bag area. Um, however, there will be essentially each player will just grab a pole along the fence line um, so that we create some good space. And if you um, especially at the start when you first arrive prior to warming up. If you'd like to bring a chair, I think that's a great idea for you to kind of plop down on as we wait and, and you prepare uh, for the day ahead. Absolutely. Um, two questions that I'm going to roll into one and then um, and then answer pretty quickly, I think, is the two questions are how many athletes will be at each time slot and then how many players are enrolled for the weekend as a whole. For the weekend as a whole, we'll see between 120 and 130 players. And so very naturally separating those into two groups, we're going to keep those groups as equal as possible um, for, for group capacity reasons, um, but also to accommodate some of those um, travel requests. We'll see between 60 and 70 in each one of those groups, most likely. Um, so hopefully that, that addresses that. Um, Jenna, the next question I'm going to turn over to you as well. Will we be provided with shirts to wear? Do we need to come in a jersey? How are how are players identified when they're on site? And and what do we what data are they tied to? And how do coaches know who they're looking at during the defensive showcase, for example? Yes, another great question. So as soon as you check into camp, there will be a station where our staff will be distributing jerseys to each player at camp. So every player in across the entire camp. So no matter if you're in wave one or wave two, you have a, you have a unique identifier. So your jersey number is distributed to you. And then coaches will receive a full camp roster in which they can see all of your information that is linked to that jersey number. Throughout the showcase, we also announce who is showcasing at all times. So as soon as you step into the cage or as soon as you step on field, you'll be identified by that jersey number upon which coaches will glance down at that all camp roster that is printed out for them on site um, to reference who it is and, and your personal information tied to it. Awesome. And then uh, one question about kind of the, the next pro upgrade and, and that video that I'll, that I'll handle. And Jenna, if you have anything to add, um, feel free to, to chime in. What is a bit unique about the Showcase Plus is that we're collecting video in kind of in two different ways. Um, one of them is through our video partner, NextPro. NextPro is collecting the defensive showcase and all of the game footage. And that video package of the defensive showcase and all of your at-bats or innings, if you're a pitcher, all of that is available for purchase through NextPro. We are also collecting ourselves with, with iPads and through things like uh, some of our, our analytics platforms like Rapsodo, we're collecting video of all hitters during the offensive showcase and of all pitchers during the pitching showcase. That showcase footage will be given to college coaches and will be distributed to families free of charge as well. So there's kind of these two different packages. Coaches will have access to all of this video. They'll have access to the video that we collect on our iPads, the Head First team, and also access to the Next Pro video, whether or not you purchase it. Players will have access to that showcase footage that the Head First team collects for free in, in the week after camp. Um, and then you can also purchase that Next Pro package to get access to that footage as well. I hope that clears it up. But Jen, any, anything, anything to add there? No, not too much to add. I think that covered it well. Fantastic. Uh, question I'm going to come right back to you with is, could you walk through what will be included on that pre-camp screening questionnaire that they're going to get in their pre-camp email tomorrow uh, tomorrow afternoon? Yes, that, that pre-screening form is specific to the student athlete's exposure to COVID-19. Sorry for not making that super clear earlier. Um, this information will just help us to provide a really safe environment on, on site um, for all attendees and our staff members. So that is why it is essential that you fill it out ahead of camp so that we can address 
any potential affirmative case uh, responses that come through and give you a call and kind of just chat through it um, to see if there's any action needed um, on your end. Um, so things like, have you, have you had any symptoms over the past few weeks? Have you traveled out of the area over the past few weeks? Um, pretty standard um, that you've probably been seeing in other public areas or stores that you've been um, going to. Absolutely. No, no uh, there's no pop quiz. It's, it's pretty straightforward stuff, but all, all really important stuff for the safety as well. Um, a couple of really good questions, Jen. I'm going to come right back to you with one more. Um, these are a couple, you know, six or so hours on site each day. What is the food and water situation? Should players bring drinks, water, food? What's the, what's the access like to water um, with the, the additional safety protocols as well? Yes, so specific to water, which should have, I should have mentioned earlier in our safety protocols as well, um, we strong we will not have basically a public um, access point for water where it would be a shared like water jug, for instance. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that you come with as many water bottles filled to the brim as you can so that you don't have to go refilling at a public location on the facility. Um, with that being said, we will have individual um, single-use water bottles um, on site um, for your use if you run out of water or need it, and that will be uh, for players and coaches alike. Um, and then in terms of food, as Max um, had mentioned, the concession will be open at Baseball Heaven. And then actually, if you do download the Honoral app, um, there will be and, and download the event. Um, you will be able to see local areas for food as well that you may be able to go run and pick up um, before or after camp. And there's one follow up question about the next pro. Is that available for purchase on site or after the event? Um, it is, it, it, they will not have a representative on site, is my understanding, for, for this event. Jenna, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but what you will get is an email after camp that will have uh, the availability to, to purchase that. So they will be in touch and you can purchase directly through them. If you have specific questions about it on site, we can also, or, or after camp as well, we can also direct you um, to that platform. It's, it's pretty easy to access once you get to their, to their web page. Um, Question uh, we're going to handle next is how many batters do pitchers face and will they need to throw in both games? Great question, Mike. So each quote unquote inning is not an actual inning. Uh, um, that was an, another game rule that I neglected to mention is we don't play, you know, a three out inning and then you and then you turn it over. We're always going to have six batters in inning. Um, and so each inning will always be that six batters. Primary pitchers will most likely throw two innings on day two, and secondaries will most likely throw one. There are some cases where you might be asked to throw a little bit more than that, or if your arm's a little sore and you want to throw less, we will check in with all pitchers on their way into the facility on day two to make sure that they are comfortable with the innings that we have assigned them. Um, one hard line that we have in the sand is as a, as a pitcher who is still a former pitcher who still has some hard times throwing on his or sleeping on his, the right side of his body, we will not have pitchers throw in both games. That's one that from an arm health perspective, that's one that we don't, that we don't mess with. Um, so pitchers will get hot and throw in one of the games and they'll throw all their innings during that time, um, during, during that, that window. Um, Jenna, Will we distribute metrics to players such as the batting, uh, the batted ball velocity over and throwing velocity 60 times, catcher pop times, that sort of thing? Uh, how, do, how do players and coaches get access to that information? Yes. So in terms of coach access, we will um, compile all of that data during camp um, after day one and make sure that it is in the coach's hands headed into day two. Um, It'll be emailed to them and they'll also be provided with a hard copy on site. Um, as far as players go, we don't necessarily give a hard copy to all players, but you can certainly feel free uh, to, to run down a red shirt or to submit an inquiry. Um, you'll see within our app that you can submit an inquiry. Um, feel free to just ask us what you what your times or what your what your data captured was on site, and we'll be happy to provide that to you. Absolutely. Um, 
great question that I love answering as our as our marketing head in this two-headed monster. Can you share 2019 results for attendees, for example, what percentage received a college offer? We track this kind of from the other end, as you might imagine, as, as either high school student athletes yourselves or parents of high school student athletes, it can be pretty tough to get all of high school seniors that came to our camp to answer an email and answer a survey. Um, somehow those escape their inbox from time to time. But what we do is we look at all of our partner programs and we look at their rosters and we look up every kid on their roster to see if they came through our camps. And so what we can say is that of our of our partner programs, the, the schools that come to our camps year after year, this past spring, before the season got unfortunately canceled, there were just over 1,300 alumni on high academic rosters at about 110 different schools around the country. For a lot of these programs, for the NESCACs, for the Ivy Leagues, for the Patriot Leagues, uh, head first honor roll alumni make up between 40 and 75% of their rosters, sometimes more than that, but kind of that 40 to 75% is what we generally see at the schools that join us year over year. Um, so that's how we kind of think about about that one. Um, really quickly, Matt, what? I do just want to yeah. go back to um, the question I had answered prior um, about metrics. Um, I was thinking specifically along the lines of overhand velo and your 60 yard dash and your jump test taken on site. Um, as for Rapsodo data and the video, that will be compiled by our team um, the week after camp. Um, and that will certainly be distributed to players um, basically through a Google Drive folder um, where it will be organized for each player and then also distributed to coaches for them to be able to access that information as well. I just wanted to make sure to clarify that. No, great, great clarification. Um, one question that I'll, that I'll take on is, so we mentioned that there's a couple NESCAC coaches in attendance in a quote unquote unofficial or individual capacity due to the NESCAC recruiting restrictions. How should a player interested in those schools interact or not interact with these coaches at camp? This is a great question. And while these coaches won't be able to be wearing their, you know, Amherst or Trinity or whatever gear on them, um, they're still fairly recognizable um, and you'll still be able to find them and you can still talk to them. They're not really limited in that they, they can still talk to student athletes. They are just technically there as an individual representative. Um, and so that's why they can't be fully branded. It's why we can't have their name or the, uh, the schools on the website or on that list that we showed you earlier. But you can still talk to them once you're on site with them as well. Jenna, one question for you. I, I know you're going to love this question. Weather contingency plans. What what happens in the event of rain while we're on site? Like, for example, there was in, in Virginia when we did this a month ago. Yes, I I certainly wish I can say that Head First hasn't faced um, <laughs> weather contingency plans, but we certainly have. And we have um, run at Baseball Heaven for a number of years, so they are definitely in place and we are ready to execute on them to be able to provide as full of an experience as we can. Um, luckily for us at Baseball Heaven, we feel really confident in our contingency plans because of the full turf um, facility that they have and the indoor facility that they have. So um, as an example, at our Virginia event two weeks ago, we did get some some pretty heavy rain and we were able to do live pitcher hitter matchups um, with video being taken in a really safe manner in an indoor facility on site. Um, and I feel that if it came down to it, we would still be able to, with the contingency plans we have, um, to resort to, especially at a really at a, at a facility we're really comfortable running at, we'll be able to execute on them really well and provide a really great experience, even if we were to get wiped out with wet rain. Um, but I think it would take consistent rain hard all day that would lead us to to have to make those calls. Yeah, and, and I think that to, to double down on that, the one of the beautiful things about Baseball Heaven is that with those turf fields, as soon as it is done raining, we can get back out onto them pretty quickly. Also, as Jenna mentioned, leveraging and using that indoor facility is really helpful for pieces of the programming. Um, we have we have dealt with rain for at, at of all types of rain at virtually all different times of the programming and in the, in the times that, that we have been running these showcase camps. And so 
unfortunately, um, we do have a lot of contingency plans that we can deploy just depending on when rain comes through and what we might need to shuffle around. So it's something that um, that we have a lot of experience planning around and, and, and working with. And at a facility like Baseball Heaven, as Jenna mentioned, really comfortable doing so given the resources of that facility being available to us. It's also something that we communicate very clearly to families on site via email, through the, the mobile app. Um, if anything changes in the programming, we'll be pushing that out proactively to families as soon as we are able to so that not only do we know what the contingency plans are, you know, up in the up in the press box, but also that families know exactly what their next steps are going to be as well. Um, one question about the information that goes out to college coaches, what information is included in each player's profile? Should we provide any updated information since the night since the 2019-2020 school year ended? So the short answer to the second part of this is yes. If you have an updated test score or an updated GPA or anything else, send that our way and we can update that profile with it. What we send along to college coaches is most of the information that you filled out during registration. Things like your unweighted GPA, your SAT score if you have it, your PSAT score, your ACT score if you have it, all those different pieces of your academic information, as well as obviously your contact information. So we'll pass along player email, player cell phone, parent email, parent cell phone, so that coaches know as much as they can about you academically. Again, given the nature of the schools that we're talking about here, they need to know that you're the right type of student for them to recruit you, as well as the right type of player. Um, and then also, so that they have your contact information so that when they see you hit that double the left center field gap, they can say, I'm going to send this kid a text right now before he leaves the field, and I'm going to try to talk to him after this game um, so they can get in touch with you really effectively. Um, and then the final question, I, I think, unless any more come in, but this might wrap it up. Um, oh, yep, there's another one coming in, so that's fine. Um, if a coach isn't going to be attending the event, would it make sense to email them before and after, or would it just be necessary to contact them with all of your data from the event? So this, I think, is – I think you can do it either way. What I would encourage student athletes to do is to reach out to coaches beforehand. If you're, if you're interested in, for example, Emory, we saw that picture of Coach Bobby Perez from Emory on that page, so, so he's in my mind. If you're interested in Emory, send Coach Perez and Coach Twardowski an email at some point next week, at, next week and say, hey, Coach Perez, Coach Twardowski, I'm really interested in Emory. Um, I know that unfortunately you guys are unable to be there at the event this weekend, but I am going to be at the Head First Showcase Plus. And, you know, I know you're going to get that information, so I'd love for you to take a look at it when, it's, when it does come through. I'm really interested in Emory because of X, Y, and Z. And, and personalize, personalize, personalize that note so that it does stand out in their inbox. And then a week after camp, when they have gotten that information, I would follow to them again and say, hey, Coach, you know, Coach Twardowski, I just wanted to follow up. Uh, I believe you have that information from camp, but just in case, here's a link to my player folder. Players will also get a link to the folder that has all their information. The point of that is, yes, coaches are going to get it, but when you send an email to a coach after camp, you should still include that link just to make sure that they do have it, they have it tied to your name, they have it tied to your email, just to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, Jenna, quick one for you, I think. Somebody is being incredibly proactive. The app is asking for a passphrase. Where do I get that? Before the, before the pre-camp email tomorrow, can we, tell, can we tell them the passphrase? Absolutely. Thank you for downloading. It is <laughs> NE for Northeast Show Plus 2020. So NE Show Plus 2020. Very exciting. I think that's the first download from the Showcase Plus. As I referenced, that also will be included in um, in that pre-camp email tomorrow. So you'll get that in writing if you you know if you didn't catch that. Um, so so have no fear. That will be around uh, as well. Um, So one question is, I mentioned updating your information. Where can we see our son's profile information in order to see if anything needs to be updated? You can access your profile through our registration platform via the confirmation email. If you go to the confirmation email that you got when you registered, which at, for, for a lot of families I know was 
eight was at least months ago and an emotional emotionally feels like years ago probably given everything going on um, you can find a link in that email to log in to your profile if you have any issues with that or anything what I would say is shoot an email or get uh, to our team or hop on the live chat and we can check and make sure that all of your information is up to date we can access your profile through the back end and just make sure okay you know I think I have Max's GP in there correctly but it's now a 375 can you check that and make sure and we say oh yep you know you're, you're all set or we can update it as you need that's what I would recommend if you don't have easy access to that confirmation email just ping us on the phone or via email or via live chat and we can take care of those updates for you um, and then one final question Jenna that I'm gonna that I'm gonna turn to you and this one I think it, it actually might be unless, again unless any more come in and, and prove me wrong um, if your player has an off day and doesn't feel like the numbers that we put that, that he puts forth on on Saturday uh, September 12th of 2020 represents cleanly the best of his abilities can we opt out of sending that metrics package to to college coaches what can we do in that event for players who say man I just I that was the best 60 I could run today but I know that I've run a faster one Yes, totally a fair question. And this this is right all about you. And there is a little bit of a um, it's a little favorable that we can tap into uh, into a, a big sheet with all the players in it and edit it if needed. So all you would have to do in that case is email in um, to uh, into into us and let us know what is it that maybe you don't feel super comfortable or confident sharing with the coaches, and we'll be sure to just delete that. Um, essentially, the way you can think of it is, this, is a full sheet of all the players at camp with all of your metrics and then links out to your player folders. Um, so if you just want a 60 deleted or a link to a folder with video deleted, we can absolutely make that happen. Um, just let us know. Fantastic. And I think that that this time does well and truly um, wrap it up. So I'll say if you have any questions at all, this is certainly not the first, last, or only chance that you have to get your questions answered. If there's anything that we can do prior to camp, feel free to, to shoot us a note or hop on live chat or anything else. Um, and then we're looking forward to, to meeting on site. Uh, on behalf of everybody from Head First, thank you for taking the time this evening, and we look forward to, to meeting you in, in just, uh, just over a week at Baseball Heaven. Thank you all so much.